Let's praise our God together this morning. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord will praise his name forever. We'll his name forever. We'll praise his name forever. Christ the Lord will give him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory. Absolutely. Can y'all say amen to that? Amen. I tell you what, it's, a, it's so fabulous, such a wonderful day to be together. I don't know where you've come from and how far you've traveled to be here today, but we are so glad that you, you were here and you chose to be here today with this family and to worship God together. And we have at least one I know who's traveled a great long distance to be here today, and I want to tell you a little bit about him. His name is Adriano, and I'm going to try to say his last name because I just know him as Adriano, but Freddy, something similar to that. So, so I'm trying my best, but many of you know Adriano. I'm going to ask Adriano to come on up as, as I speak to, about him for just a moment. Many of you know and are great friends with Adriano because you were part of a Brazil trip or trips that this church took in 2006 and 2008. 
And Adriano was just a young teenager with a, with a smile as big as Texas and still's got it, still has it, and a heart as big as Brazil. Um, and Adriano um, is a dear friend uh, of many of us, and his ministry and what he's doing, our church, just so you know, our church supports. And through what's happening on October 1st, our church continued to support things like Adriano and his ministry, which is a multifaceted ministry in Brazil, but it includes worship leading and equipping and training worship leaders. That's just a part of what he does, which is a really multifaceted thing. So uh, several of us gathered in Craig, Craig and Dina's living room on Friday, and we thought, my goodness, we need, Adriano needs to lead us in a couple of songs this morning. And, and so he's going to do so. He's going to lead us in a couple songs. One you'll be really familiar with. The other we will, is God is so good, but we're going to sing it in English and then Portuguese. So get ready. So Adriano, good luck. We're just, we're just going to follow along as best we can, but we're going to do the best we can, aren't we, church? Y'all stand up, and we're going to sing together. Before I start singing, I'll just... Uh yeah, I just kind of teach you some Portuguese. So I just want to um, follow me, repeat. Deus é tão bom. Deus é tão bom. It means God is so good in Portuguese. And the last part, é tão bom para mim, is good to me, para mim. Can you say para mim? Okay, Deus... É tão bom para mim. And the second verse says, Cristo é real. Christ is real. And is real to me. Is real para mim. Say, é real para mim. Okay, so let's start sing. Um, sing aloud to God with me in this morning. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, the people shout before his throne. Hallelujah, sing hallelujah.
together. Holy God, thank you so much for being so good. Father, all creation praises your name. In all kinds of language, every tribe and every nation gathers this day to declare the truths of the gospel and that God loves and that God saves. Father, we thank you for those all around this world, including, including our friend Adriano, who is declaring the name of Jesus to be the name above all names the name that saves. And Father, I pray that you continue to bless he and his family, Carol and his kids and their ministry. And Father, we thank you for the love that you have for each of us. Father, use us to do your will this day. May you be praised in all things throughout the world and in every language. Through Jesus, we all pray and everyone said, amen. amen. Y'all may be seated. Good morning, church. Isn't that amazing? It's just a testament to the outreach that this church has, and it's really an awesome thing to be a part of. Um, as I reflect on today's message, I started thinking about the first few visits that I had here at this church and how uniquely welcoming everybody is here. And it is unlike a lot of the other experiences that I had prior to coming here, but it, as I was trying to find a verse that kind of encapsulated that a little bit, I came up with what Paul wrote in Romans 15, 7, accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. And members of this church act this out daily, and it's one of the primary reasons that my family decided to live here in Decatur and ultimately raise our family in this church. But before becoming members here, um, and we, before we moved to Decatur, uh, this wonderful congregation, uh, many of you I didn't know at the time, hosted a wedding shower for my wife and I. And that wasn't something I was used to, so I kind of struggled to grasp the level of generosity and why the outpour of love for people who weren't even members of the church. And uh, my wife, who is a third generation member of this church, uh, wasn't very surprised about it and just kind of said, this is just how this church operates. And I've now learned that we operate at just a higher standard of love and generosity. And so it's really cool to be a part of. And um, it reminds me of 1 John where at 4, 19, says, we love because he first loved us. I experienced this firsthand as this church became a living testament of that scripture to me, showing me and this community and all around the world as we heard this morning, unconditional love that drew me closer to God and makes me feel seen, valued, and ultimately, ultimately at home here. As we come together in communion today, I'd like to use this moment to share a uh, a thing that happened in my family just the other day, and it just kind of shows the impact this church has on my family. But just the other day, my daughter Briar, who is often in her own little world, as some of you may already know, um, has uh, recently received a toy microphone. And so she uses that to sing and dance around the house. And so, as you can imagine, there's no lack of entertainment in my home. 
right now. So, uh, but the other day as I was walking through the living room, I heard her precious little voice singing a song about Jesus. And in that moment, I stopped to just kind of listen and appreciate what was happening. And just the realization of how amazing it is that her journey with Jesus has started at such a young age. And then I just began to feel extremely grateful for this church and all of the ways that y'all pour back into the members and the things that my kid gets to benefit from. And so I'm just extremely grateful and, uh, and very happy to be a part of this com uh, community. So, but um, as Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians of the communion that we're about to partake in, emphasizing its unity, and in that spirit, I don't only want to be reminded of Christ's sacrifice, but also of the beautiful bond that this community shares. So please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we hold this bread, please think of Jesus and how he gave his life for us. We're so thankful of the love and the sacrifice. May this bread remind us to show that same love to others. Help us always think, speak, and act with kindness, guided by your love. Bless this bread as we eat, bringing us closer to you. perfect peace in this dark world of sin the blood of Jesus whispers peace within peace Loving Father, this cup reminds us of the promise Jesus made as he shared his last meal with his friends. We're so grateful for the hope and love it represents. May we all be inspired to share that love with those around us, letting it shape our thoughts, our words, and actions. Bless this cup that represents your son's blood as we drink. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Peace, perfect peace, with sorrow surging around on Jesus, bosom not but calm is found.
Well, good morning. It has already been such a wonderful, wonderful day of worship. I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, if you are here for the very first time, or maybe you've just been here a couple of times and are visiting with us, we wanna say a special welcome to you that we are so glad that you have joined us today for our worship service. Uh, on the end of every pew, there is a clipboard. And what we do every week is we ask our members to fill in your name and let us know that you're here. And if you're a visitor, there's also a space on that clipboard for you to put your name, uh, some contact information so that I can reach out to you sometime this week and, and just say thank you for being here. We would really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind filling that out. As well as, uh, I know many of you are sick and tired of hearing me say this, but we also recently developed a church app, and uh, you can also check in on our church app and let us know that you're here, uh, and we would really appreciate us uh, getting that information so that we know uh, if there's somebody that we need to reach out to this week that we've been missing uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, but it's so good to have each and every one of you here. Uh, we have a couple of big events coming up, a couple of big things to celebrate and to look forward to here at our church. And so I want to take a few minutes just to tell you about what a couple of those things are. Uh, the first of which is uh, that we have our Mission Sunday coming up, which Jacob already alluded to. Uh, and you can see on either side of our stage, uh, October the 1st of 2023. And so starting next week, we're going to be sharing some information. We're going to have uh, some information about our various mission activities that we're looking to raise funds for this year. And we're excited about Mission Sunday. Every year, uh, there, there's an energy that comes around uh, Mission Sunday at this church. And so we're excited to hear about these, these efforts that we're doing to try to advance the gospel all throughout the world, as well as getting to uh, celebrate together as a church the generosity of each and every person in this room. And so we look forward to that day and we encourage you to start uh, prayerfully getting ready for uh, hearing about what God is doing through us and among us and all over his creation. Uh, we look forward to that day. Also, I'm also looking forward to a couple of other activities that are coming up, uh, one of which is that school is now fully back in session. And, and so uh, I know for our youth group kiddos and, and families, uh, we've got Monday night Bible studies starting back up again tomorrow night. And so if you're in the youth group, uh, if you have a kid in the youth group, please make sure to check the bulletin for information about that uh, as those Monday night Bible studies are starting again starting tomorrow. And we also have our, our Children's Place Preschool Mother's Day Out program that is gonna be starting up here uh, just at the other side of Labor Day uh, on September the 5th. And so uh, there's an announcement in the bulletin about chalking the walk. And so I want to encourage each of you to uh, think about going out as you exit today or next week, uh, going out this direction and finding some of that chalk that you can leave an encouraging message for the kids and for the families who are going to be dropping their kids off uh, on September the 5th is the start of our Children's Place school year this year. And so looking forward to that day as well and want, want to encourage you to participate with us in that. And then on September the 10th, we are kicking off our fellowship groups. Uh, I know many of you have participated in fellowship groups in the past, and so I want to encourage you to continue to do that. And if you're somebody who has not participated with us in our fellowship groups, we want to encourage you to sign up for a group this year. It'd be a great opportunity for you to meet some people, develop some community, and spend some time uh, in, in fellowship with one another. And so those are going to be starting on September the 10th. In the bulletin, there is an announcement about how you can uh, sign up for those. I think there's also maybe some slides uh, showing uh, if you click on that weekly update update purple button uh, on our church app. Uh, there's all kinds of information about things that are coming up as well as our fellowship groups. And so we want to encourage you uh, to sign up for those, start signing up for those. And we look forward to those kicking off on September the 10th. There's a number of other uh, announcements that I encourage you to take a look at in the bulletin this morning. Some good things that are going on. Uh, Decatur ISD Prayer Walk, RAN Elementary Mentor Program. Uh, we're, we're collecting gifts for the Dominguez family as uh, they're preparing for the birth of, uh, of their second child. And so uh, I encourage you to check the bulletin for other announcements and other events that are coming up. But I also wanna encourage you to uh, look on the other side of the page at our prayer request section and for us to spend a moment uh, thinking about some of the prayer requests of our church. The first prayer request that I wanna share with you is a congratulations note to the McCurdy family. Daniel and Kara gave birth on Friday. Well, Kara gave birth on Friday. Uh, uh. All you dads out there kind of know how, how that goes, I guess. But uh, uh, Sally Mae was born on Friday, and she is 7 pounds and 19.2 inches, and mom and baby are both doing fantastic. And so we want to say congratulations to the McCurdys, as well as congratulations to the grandparents, Casey and Kim, and Craig and Dana Anderson. Uh, fantastic news. We're so happy uh, for that entire family about the birth of Sally Mae. I also want to give a couple of updates uh, that you see in our uh, bulletin as well. Uh, we continue to pray for Connie Hawk, who had a successful surgery, and we're grateful for that. Uh, and she was able to go home this past week. Uh, we also want to celebrate. Uh, there's a note in here about Leo Stewart, uh, Dave and Sonia Seabury's grandson. He did have surgery, and it was a successful surgery, and they're looking ahead down the road to a second surgery. Uh, but for right now, they're excited that this first surgery was a success uh, to help some of the growth plate issues that he's dealing with. We also want to pray for Lyle Hart. Uh, Lyle's doing a lot better today, uh, but his legs are 
still very sore. And uh, tomorrow he's gonna be having a port uh, put in so that he can have dialysis done on a regular basis. And so we wanna continue to pray for Lyle and for the entire Hart family, as well as for Erlene Niblett. Uh, Erlene had a fall on Thursday. She had to have eight stitches put into the back of her head. And so she's doing okay now, but she's still sore from that fall and recovering from that. So we wanna continue to pray for both she and for Don. And then also wanna pray this morning for uh, Brother Coy. Brother Coy is having some hip issues and uh, some pain that's uh, coming about as a result of that. So please lift up Coy in your prayers this week as well, and uh, we can pray for his healing and that, uh, that he'd be able to continue to, to get around, and, and it's always a joy to have Coy with us on Sunday, so we want that to continue. If you would this morning, please join me in a word of prayer. God, we come before you this morning. We lift up to you everything that we have and everything that we are. God, we know that there are concerns on the hearts of many in this room, and so we lift those up to you, and we pray for peace and for healing and for comfort. And God, this morning as we continue in our worship and as we open up your word and as we seek to understand your will for us, God, we just pray that you'd be present in this room. We know that you already are, and so we pray that you would open our eyes to your presence here, to your spirits moving among us and through us. And God, we pray today that as we seek to glorify you, as we seek to do your will, uh, that everything that we have, everything that we are, would be offered to you as a sacrifice so that we can be your followers in this world, so that we can help to show your love and your peace that you have brought. It's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. If it's convenient for you to stand, I invite you to do so. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You seated. So I'm sometimes asked by uh, people who are interested uh, in knowing things like this, how churches are doing these days, and, and what are the trends and things like that that people are noticing uh, as we think about churches in this post-COVID world. And what's funny to me about this is that they're asking me, which I find to be quite humorous, because by no means am I any kind of expert on this topic. Uh, but oftentimes I get questions about this, and usually the questions are really asking questions more like, hey, how's the attendance at your church doing? Or, or what are you noticing uh, as far as that's concerned? And what's different now than the way that it used to be? Uh, and I find it interesting that these questions are being asked uh, not only today, but, but throughout all of history, because uh, oftentimes the, the heart behind these questions is really good, but the question itself is kind of a flawed question, if you notice. Well, how are churches doing? Well, I, I think churches overall are gonna be doing just fine because they're connected to the kingdom and the mission of Jesus Christ, right? And so I understand the heart behind these questions, but sometimes the question can kind of come through as a little bit flawed. Uh, in fact, I, I had a preacher, a mentor of mine who, who told a story. He, he talked about the, the story of the rich young ruler in the gospel of Luke. Uh, anybody in here familiar with the story of the rich young ruler? Uh, just a couple. Uh, I think probably more than just a couple, but that's all right. Uh, I'll tell you what, it, what it's about just really briefly anyways. Uh, the rich young ruler is the story where this young man comes before Jesus and he wants to know what it will take to inherit eternal life. And when Jesus hears this uh, question from this man, he knows who this particular young man is and he knows the heart of this young man. And so he responds and he tells him, well, what does the law say? And, and so the young man starts to recount, well, it says this and this and this. And, and Jesus says, and how are you doing with those? And he says, well, I've done all these since I was a young boy. And Jesus says, that's fantastic. But there's still one thing that you haven't done, which is to sell everything that you have, take the proceeds and to give it to the poor. And when the young man heard Jesus say that to him, he walked away sad. And I love the, 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 the point of this story because the point of this story is that in any of us have an opportunity to follow Jesus, but it's gonna cost us something. It's probably gonna cost us whatever that one thing is that we don't wanna get rid of or let go of. And so the way that my preacher mentor told me about this story is he said that the kingdom of God just kept on going, but the rich young ruler missed out on it because he walked away sad. He walked away without being able to do the one thing that Jesus asked of him. And so today we're continuing to talk about what it means to be ministry servants and to, to be participants in service as a church. And we wanna reignite a passion for that within our church body. And so uh, last week we, we spent some time talking about how Jesus did this really well in his life and in his ministry. And this week, what I want us to do is I want us to turn the attention back onto ourselves and say, okay, now that we have the example of Jesus, how is it that we are going to participate in ministry and in service as his followers? Because the truth is that the kingdom of God will just keep going even if we don't participate in ministry and service, but we'll miss out on it. And so I think I speak, I hope I speak for all of us today when I say that we don't want that to be the case. We wanna be participants in God's kingdom here on earth as one day it will be just as it is in heaven. And so this morning, what I wanna do is I wanna invite you to uh, look really briefly with me at a passage from the book of Ephesians. If you've got a Bible, I encourage you to turn over to Ephesians chapter four. The words will also already are on the screen. Uh, and so I encourage you to follow along with this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna read this passage and, and there's a lot going on in this particular passage, these few verses in the book of Ephesians. And we don't have a lot of time time to, to discuss all of, all of that's going on, but I want to draw two important ideas out of these verses for us this morning uh, and use them as kind of a launching pad into talking about ministry and service here at, at our church. So uh, read with me these verses starting in ch uh, chapter four, verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. 
Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every, in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So like I said, these verses are, are pretty packed with a lot of information that Paul is throwing our direction here in the book of Ephesians. But I wanna do is I wanna draw two, uh, two elements from this, two lessons that I think we can be reminded of, two messages that Paul has for us this morning from this, from this particular passage that will help kind of launch us into this conversation about ministry and service here in our body. So the first message goes something like this, that Christ's service gives us an example to also serve. This is what Rick talked about last week, uh, that we spoke about the idea that God in flesh came not to be served, but to serve. And so because of the example of Jesus, we have an example of how we also can serve in our lives. Because of what Jesus has done, because of who Jesus is, because of how he has lived in the world, we have an example to follow. And we can choose to follow in his footsteps, to lay our lives down for one another in service and in ministry. The second lesson that we can draw from this passage is that service is an avenue by which we learn of the love of Christ. I think this is really important for us to grasp a hold of because in our world today, there are no shortage of examples of people who don't understand and who don't know the love that Christ has for them. But with the way that Paul lays this out is that we are to build one another up in love as the body of Christ. That as we seek to be the people of Jesus, that we are actually participating in who Jesus is, that he is the head of all of us. And we have the opportunity to participate in his love so that the world can see through the windows that our lives become who Jesus is and how much he loves them. Uh, think, for example, a couple of examples here. Imagine a child who is raised, and this child is meant to be raised in a family that is full of love, but instead of experiencing the love of the parents, the child experiences anything but that. Imagine what would be different if that child had an example of love, the love of a parent, the love of a father and a mother, the love that God has for them. Or instead, imagine a churchgoer who has decided that they're going to leave behind their faith and they're going to leave not because something that God failed to do for them, but they're going to leave because of a failure of God's people, of the followers of Jesus. And if you're like me, both of these examples, uh, both of these illustrations, you can automatically start to think of people that this might apply to in your life. That there might be people that you know that, that they don't have a positive experience of what a loving parent looks like in their life, or they don't have a positive ex example of what uh, the, the love of, of God's people looks like in their world. And imagine how their lives might be different and how their attitude towards God might be different if they did. If only either of the people, these illustrations knew the love that God has for them. And, and, and today what I wanna get across to you is that we have the opportunity to provide that for others by choosing to love, by choosing to serve, and by choosing to minister to them. So Christ gives us an example of service to follow. And because of that example of Christ's service, we can choose to, to serve as well. And, and as, as we serve, we can show people what the love of God looks like in their lives. And at the beginning of, our, of the sermon today, I told you that I'm often asked about some trends and things like that that people notice in churches. And when it comes to ministry and service, I do actually have a couple of things that I've noticed that are, are kind of almost across the board with churches. Now, when it comes to ideas of service and ministry, that there are a lot of similarities between us. And so today, what I wanna do now is I wanna shift into this idea of thinking about churches and our church specifically and, and the ministries that we have as a church and the ministries that we see across many different churches and the different categories that we might place them into. Because oftentimes, I think that there's actually four different kinds of ministry, four different stages of ministry that often our ministries go through. And so I wanna share with you briefly what those are, and there's probably more than just these four, uh, but I think that this will be a nice encapsulation for us to think about, okay, what's going on here at this particular church? What are the ways that I need to start thinking about the ministries that we have going on? And how can I start thinking about how I'm gonna engage in service and in ministry here at this church? So the first stage of ministry that I think a lot of people uh, see are, are ministries that need new life. And, and so this category kind of uh, captures a, a group of ministries, perhaps that are dormant, perhaps there are ministries that had gone on for many, many years, but maybe because of COVID or, or any number of reasons, these ministries have stopped happening. And that doesn't mean that the ministries are bad or that the ministries have failed. It simply means that the ministries have run out of gas and that they need a little bit of new life. They need somebody to step in and say, I'm willing to take this up. 
I'm willing to participate in this way and to serve in this way. So many ministries get to this stage because somebody who has been involved in this ministry has been the primary driver of that ministry, but that person grows tired and grows weary and they need a break and they need somebody to come behind them and to follow in their footsteps and to take up the leadership of that ministry. And so as we think about ministries in, in, in our church and in our context, we have some ministries that are kind of like this, that ministries that might need new life, ministries that might need you to step in and to say, I'm willing to serve because I know that there's somebody who's tired. I know that this ministry hasn't been going on for a little while. And so I'm ready to step in. I'm ready to, to serve and, and to put my name on this and to say, I'll do that. I'll do that in the name of Jesus. So we have ministries that might need a little bit of, of new life, but we also have ministries that don't exactly need new life, but what they really need is just a little bit of help. They've got people who are leading them. They've got, they're still ongoing right now. They're not dormant, but they need help. They need new people to step in and say, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to get my hands dirty. I'm ready to do some of this work. And so this is our second stage of ministry is ministries that need help. And, and, and what ministries that need help need are servants. Don't they all, right? Every ministry needs servants. But this needs people who are just ready to step in and say, I, I can do whatever you need me to do. Just tell me where to go, tell me where to be, and tell me what to do, and I'm ready to help in that way. What these ministries need are people who are excited and ready to serve, people who are ready to jump in at a moment's notice. Moment's notice. The third type of ministry is the four, third stage that we might see are ministries that don't need new life, they don't need help, but what they need is encouragement. They need people who are, who, who are witnessing what God is doing through those ministries and saying, hey, I wanna just cheer you on because I see the difference that you're making for God's kingdom. I see how you're making a difference in the name of Jesus. And I just wanna celebrate you. I wanna congratulate you. I wanna encourage you and say, keep going. Keep doing the good work that God has called you to. And what I love about this category of ministry is that every single one of us can do this one. Not everybody can, can step in and say, I'm gonna lead a ministry. Not everybody can say, I'm gonna serve at a moment's notice. But every single one of us can encourage somebody who's involved in ministry. Every single one of us can pat somebody on the back and say, you're making a difference for God's kingdom right here and now. And I want you to know that I'm noticing it. It's making a difference and I wanna encourage you to keep up the good work. So we have some ministries that need encouragement. Groups of people that have been serving quietly, they don't need a, a, a whole event thrown in their honor and their dedication. They just need to know that they are doing meaningful work in the name of Jesus. And then the fourth kind of ministry are ministries that need to be started. And I love this idea because this opens the door for us. It opens the door to let us know that there are opportunities that God's spirit is putting on each and every one of our hearts. Opportunities, uh, ways that we can serve somebody in this congregation or in this community to let them know that, hey, we, we notice you and we think that you're worthy of my service. These are opportunities that perhaps are, are on your head in your head or on your heart already. They're put there by God's spirit. Maybe you already know, maybe as I'm saying this, you, you're thinking, yeah, I've been thinking about a ministry that needs to be happening here at this church and, and I just haven't known what to do or who to tell or, or what to say about it. And that's God's spirit urging you and encouraging you to say there's something that needs to be started here. And what I love about this is what I've, what I've noticed over the last uh, nearly year that I've been here is that our elders and our mission committee, and I wanna give props to our mission committee for this as well because we're about to, to go through Mission Sunday. Uh, but, but our church leadership believes that the best way for us to do this is to hear about that ministry and to get excited alongside you and to empower you to do that ministry. Uh, uh, we're about to start talking about our mission efforts that we're gonna be raising funds for at the beginning of October. And the majority, I think maybe even all of our mission efforts that we're gonna be supporting were started by one person in this congregation because one person had a passion and said, we, we ought to be serving in this way. We ought to be collecting funds and supporting this particular mission work in this way. And so what happens is they, they bring this idea to our mission committee and our mission committee says, that's a great idea. Are you willing to be the person who stands up and advocates for this mission work? Are you willing to be the person who stays in contact with that missionary and who, who lets us know what we need to do and who needs to be doing what to help support them? And, and so this idea that we have ministries that need to be started and they might be in your heads and in your hearts right now. What we wanna do with those is we wanna hear about them. We wanna say, that's a great idea. How can we support you with that ministry? How can we help you get that off the ground? How can we help you do that ministry here and now? What I want you to hear about this ministry, this idea, this stage of ministry, this kind of ministry, is that these ideas are in your head and in your heart and they're placed there by God's spirit. And oftentimes what I believe to be true about these ministries and all ministries is that they're there because you have a passion. They're there because you have some excitement about something 
and where your passion and where your excitement lies intersects with the need that somebody else has. Where your passion is intersects with the needs of those in our community. It intersects with those who are out in the mission field, who need our support, who need our prayers, who need our encouragement. When I was still living in Dallas, I was invited to go on a bus ride with a ministry that had begun about 25 years ago. And this particular ministry had grown out of a church context and it had separated itself into its own nonprofit ministry. And the the goal of this ministry was to rescue and give resources like job training and housing and mental health services, as well as spirituality to women who had previously been prostituted and trafficked in the city of Dallas. And so I was invited to go on this bus ride with this particular ministry. And what, what I learned as I'm going on this bus ride is that they're stopping at places that look like they're safe places. You know, they're stopping in this, this, even a wealthy area and saying, this is where we, we stood up and we said, there's something wrong here. And so they stood in the gap where women who had been prostituted were trafficked in Dallas. And they found ways of shutting down those operations. They found ways of drawing legal attention to them so that those operations would end and that, that the women who were being abused through that process could be saved from it. And what I learned about that ministry was that it intersected with the needs of those women and the passion and excitement of people who were sitting in the pews. Because the way that that ministry got started was that a woman walked through the doors of a church of Christ in Dallas and simply said, I need help. Because she was being prostituted. And as she walked through the doors of that church, the ladies who met her couldn't let her leave in that situation. And they said, we've got to do something about this. Their passion was kindled. Their excitement for that ministry was kindled. And 25 years later, that ministry was still going and was ending prostitution and sex trafficking in Dallas. Now, that may not be the exact ministry that's on your heart. But what I want you to hear this morning is that there are ministries that God is placing on the hearts of each and every one of us. Ministries that have been ongoing, ministries that need to be restarted, or ministries that need to be started in the first place. Because it intersects with a passion, with an excitement that you have to serve God's kingdom and with the needs that people have right here in our church or in our community. So before we go any farther and before we uh, maybe even get a little bit specific here this morning about what, what it is that we can do as, as church members in this family and this fellowship can do, let me, let me just share with you briefly a couple of dangers that we often fall into when it comes to asking people to serve in ministry in churches, as well as a couple of antidotes, uh, ways that we can help make sure that we don't fall into these traps, into these dangers. So the first one, uh, the first danger is really two dangers. I snuck in two on you on the first one, uh, but they're really two sides of the same coin. Uh, so the first danger addresses burnout and overextending volunteers. And so the danger is inaction or retirement. Let me explain what I mean by by both of those. Churches can can fall so guilty to this so often. I've seen it uh, in my short time in ministry already a number of times, but but we can often ask too much of you as church leaders. Does anybody, do I hear an amen? I mean, make it a quiet amen uh, if you say it. But, But sometimes we can be guilty of this, right? We can ask you to do too much. And so the the temptation becomes, well, they're asking so much and I don't know where to get started and I've already got a full calendar. I've got kids events, I've got got job responsibilities, I've got all these different things that are already filling up my calendar and I don't know where to get plugged in and I don't know where to serve. And so rather than going through the trouble of finding out how I can do that, I'm just gonna sit back and do nothing and hopefully somebody else will step up and take care of it. And so this first danger is that of inaction because it's maybe too overwhelming or I don't have enough time to serve and commit to doing something. But what often happens as a result is that that leads other people into our second danger, which is the same, the, the, the same other side of the coin, but the same uh, danger number one here, which is that of retirement. And, and so what happens is, is people don't know what to do. They don't know how to get involved. And so they, they might not. And then you have another group of people that say, well, this has got to get done. And so you have a, a group of people who sign up for everything and decide I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it on and do everything because it's got to get done. Maybe some of you have heard the old saying that in, in churches, there's 20% of the people that do 80% of the work. Has anybody heard that before this morning? Uh, I'm getting a few head nods, yeah. And so what happens is over time, those who, who step up and they say, I'm gonna sign up for everything, I'm gonna help serve in every possible way, is those people get tired and those people get burnt out until the point where they've had enough and they say, I'm done, I'm walking away, I'm retiring. And the only problem with either of these two dangers is that they don't look really much all that much like Jesus to me. When Jesus calls us, he calls us to give our entire lives, which means that even if we have busy calendars and busy schedules, Jesus is still calling us to serve in his kingdom in whatever way that looks like. 
But Jesus is also saying to us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so for those of us who maybe are are guilty of overextending ourselves and getting burnt out, the kingdom of God doesn't look like people who are tired. It looks like those who are passionate and excited about God's kingdom. And so the antidote to these two dangers of inaction and and growing so burnt out that we retire is to think of on-ramps and off-ramps. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to interview, and, and, and luckily, I was hired and, and fortunate enough to, to be hired, and, and I'm so glad to be with you on staff now. Uh, but this is one of the things that I talked about in my interview, with, is, and I, I believe passionately in this idea of on-ramps and off-ramps. And what this simply means is that you have a chance uh, uh, to join in with a ministry, an on-ramp. Think of a freeway. You know, you're driving along the freeway, and you get onto the on-ramp, and now you're joining with traffic. But oftentimes, we might need an off-ramp. We might need a way to get off of that particular road and to get onto another one. And so what I believe is that churches ought to have regular rhythms and seasons of on-ramps and off-ramps where you can join a ministry or step out of a ministry, not so that you can retire, but so that you can step out of that ministry to be refreshed and then to join a new ministry, to join a new on-ramp. And I believe that this is an opportunity that all churches should take that should be honoring of you and your time as members, but also to help continue the mission of God in this world that we need on-ramps and off-ramps and we need regular opportunities to join ministries and to step away from ministry so that we can be refreshed so that we can then join into new ministries. I hope this morning as you hear that idea expressed, uh, I hope that that's an encouragement to you. That if you, if you were to sign up for a ministry that we're not asking you to sign up for that ministry from now until the day that you die. But we're offering you an opportunity to serve in God's kingdom. And when you need a chance to refresh, to take that off-ramp, so that you can then be refreshed to join a new on-ramp and serve in a new way. Danger number two, forgetting your mission. This one is so easy to fall prey to in ministry work. Uh, Let me give you an example. I heard about a ministry a couple years back and and this ministry was started as an opportunity to, to serve meals to homeless men and women in a particular community. And as this ministry was going on, it also had, had existed for several decades. And as this ministry was going along, what would happen is that the members would gather together at the church building. They'd bring groceries together and they'd put together meals, often just like a little sack lunch or something like that. And after they had that time of, of putting together meals, they would then spread out throughout the city and they'd drive in separate cars and they'd go to well-known places where homeless men and women gathered so they could then distribute those meals. Well, over time, often ministries forget their mission. And this particular ministry was no, uh, it it had the same problem. It forgot its mission. And over time, the the people who volunteered day after day and year after year with this particular ministry, they realized that it'd be a lot easier if as we're preparing these meals here at the church building, if we could also just distribute them here. That would save on time, that'd save on money because the church was reimbursing gas money for everyone who would spread out throughout the city and, and go and take meals to different people. And that would save a lot, of, a lot of distractions and we could get this done a lot faster. And so they decided to implement it. And so they, they decided we're gonna gather here together, we're gonna put together the sack lunches and then we'll invite people here and, and we'll tell them for several weeks so that they know where to come and we'll distribute the meals here at the church. And the only problem with that was do you remember who they were serving? Homeless men and women homeless men and women who probably didn't have reliable transportation and who were unwilling to spend what little money and resources they had on bus passes and tickets to get to the church building. They had forgotten the primary group of people that they were seeking to serve and they had begun to think, well, we can, make, we can improve this ministry. We can make it so much easier on us. We can make it easier on the church budget. And so what they noticed is that over the next few weeks, they were only handing out about 20% of the meals that they were preparing that they had previously been handing out and distributing in their community. And so luckily, after a few weeks of doing this, they began to to reevaluate their decision. And luckily, they changed course and they went back to doing it the original way where they were distributing meals and they were still able to serve the same amount of people that they were serving beforehand and trying to provide them a meal in the name of Jesus. But this can be so easy for us to do, that we forget what our mission is. Maybe it's in the name of innovation or maybe it's in the name of trying to make things easier or simpler or, or trying to save a few dollars here or there that we forget our mission. And I believe that the antidote to this is to remember that our ministry is meant to be a blessing and not a burden. And so anytime that we begin to notice that our ministries are becoming a burden, the details are becoming too hard, it's it's causing too much stress on the church budget, maybe we need to be reminded that our ministry is meant to be a blessing instead. And now that's not to say that, that ministries don't need to adapt and change over the course of time, because of course they do. But we can't do it at the expense of forgetting what our mission is our mission of serving others in the name of Jesus with the love that Christ has for us because he is our example 
And by serving in his name, we can open a window so that others can see through us to the love that Christ has for them. You know, an example that I, uh, uh, Jacob actually helped me with this, uh, an example of this that, that we thought of earlier this week with this particular church was a number of years ago, this church had been uh, doing VBS and, and, and every summer we would gather together for VBS and it had gotten to the point where it was difficult to find volunteers for VBS year after year to the point where it was almost impossible. And another thing that we noticed is that there seemed to be almost a circuit of people who were dropping kids off one day a week at different churches so that they could catch every VBS in town. And it was almost becoming like a childcare service rather than it was a mission for Jesus. And so a few people got together and said, well, what can we do about this? How can we remember what our mission is to serve people? And out of that, Gear Up was born. We decided we're gonna let VBS pass away so that we can do this other thing that can serve people in our community in the name of Jesus, that can meet with the needs that they have and the passion of the people that we have in this church. And so 15 years later now, we're still doing gear up and we're still serving people's needs in our community and in our county because we didn't forget our mission. Our mission wasn't about an event. Our mission was about serving people in the name of Jesus. Danger number three, service becomes service. Did I say that well enough? Service becomes serve us. When I was in high school, uh, my youth group handed out a, a t-shirt to some of us who were going on a mission trip that had this slogan on it. And I've remembered it all the way up until this day because it's so easy for each of us to fall into this danger, this temptation of thinking that, well, if I'm serving, I might as well be comfortable while I'm doing it. Uh, if I'm serving, I might as well get something out of it. And so easy we can turn the attention off of those that we are meant to serve and onto ourselves. And I know that I myself can be guilty of this just as much as anybody, of, anybody else. And this is a danger that I think we need to be careful to avoid when we talk about ministry and service, that it doesn't just become about us, but instead we remember who it is that we are ultimately serving, which is Christ. Uh, my wife works for a ministry called Our Father's Children. And, and one of the things that they do with their ministry is they hold trainings for their volunteers every year. And at every training that they do, they try to remind people of this idea that your service is not about you. And so what they do, they, they provide summer camps and weekend retreats for kids who are in the foster care system. And so what they do is they remind their volunteers that when you're at camp or when you're at a retreat, remember, it's not about you. It's not about you. Jacob told me about our trip to Ecuador a couple of weeks ago. And he, he told me uh, one of the things that they did every morning is they'd gather together for a devotional thought. And so one of the men on the trip would lead a devotional. And then immediately after the devotional, they would go into physical stretches. And the reason that they would do this was to remind themselves to stay flexible because the trip wasn't about them. And it wasn't even about the schedule that they had created in advance. It was about what do we need to do today to serve God and to serve his people so that people can see through us an example of the love that Christ has for them. The antidote to this idea of serving service, not becoming service, is that our giftedness should reveal God's glory and no one else's. Our giftedness, the things that God has gifted us to do, the way that we can serve in this world should not be about us, but it should be about God's glory and God's glory alone. Because we know that ultimately every knee will bow, not to us, not to our desires, not to our comfort, but every knee will bow before the throne of Jesus and his name will be exalted and glorified. And we hope as ministers, as elders of this church, that we can participate in a, as an entire church in these ideas and in this mentality, that it's all about him and not about us. So this morning, uh, I haven't had a, an opportunity to really get very specific about any of our particular ministries, uh, but I would love to have an opportunity to do that with you. And so if you're sitting in the pews wondering, okay, this, these are great ideas, these are great reminders to us, but what, what are the actual ministries that I need to be involved in? Uh, let me give you a couple of ideas about ways that you can find out about those, uh, ways that you can start serving in those. Uh, the first idea that I wanna to communicate to you is the idea of prayer. Uh, if you're here this morning and you're participating in ministry or maybe you're not participating in ministry, I think regardless, the first thing that we need to do is ask God, what are the needs that are all around me? And where are you igniting passion within me to help serve in those needs? What are the different areas that I can be involved in, whether it's in this church or in this community, to help serve in your name? Where is your spirit leading me in ministry? 
I think that's the first thing that we need to do. The second thing that we need to do is uh, that if you, if you need to know information, if you'd like to know more about our specific ministries, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can find out that information. Uh, first of all, you can come and talk to me. You can talk to one of our minister, ministers, Jacob or Alexandria. Uh, talk to one of our elders. Uh, they would love to visit with you about ministries that we have going on and the ways that you can get involved. Uh, maybe you're a person that has an idea for a ministry and you wanna come and, and, and talk to us and say, hey, what, what, what if we looked at doing a ministry like this? What would, that, what would I need to do to get that off the ground? Uh, we'd be excited to talk to you about that. Uh, another way that you can find out information is if you're the kind of person who likes to download apps onto your phone, uh, we have a church app and there's an easy way that you can see a list of ministries that we have on our church app. Uh, you've got this little video here that'll show you on the homepage you can click on that blue button that says ministries and it'll take you to a list of ministries. And as you click through that, you can start to click on different ministries and find out even the person that you need to talk to to get involved in those ministries. Uh, if you're not a church app person, again, I wanna encourage you to come and talk with one of us. We'd love to sit down and visit with you about this. If you're new to our church, if you're visiting, if you've just placed membership, on September the 17th, we're gonna be hosting a new member information lunch. Uh, visitors are welcome to come to this lunch as well. This is an opportunity where we're gonna share information about our ministries that are going on that we are excited about and that we want you to get excited about with us and join us in serving. Third, if you're ready to join an on-ramp to one of our ministries that you already know about, uh, there's an easy form that we want you to fill out. Uh, and so if you go to that next slide, it should show this QR code that'll take you to that form. And there's an opportunity for you to just say, hey, I'm interested in this, in this ministry, or I'm interested in finding out about this ministry. There's even a spot on there that if you wanna fill out, I wanna start this ministry, there's a place that you can do that on this form. And so I encourage you to take a picture of this, uh, fill that out today, fill that out this week, and uh, I'll get those form responses and I'd be more than happy to follow up with you about that. And then lastly, if you're a person who's already been involved in ministry and you've been involved in, for a number of years in a ministry and you're looking for an off-ramp, you're not looking for an on-ramp, you're looking for an off-ramp, uh, please come and talk with me. Please come and talk with one of our elders. Isolation is one more problem that we don't need to deal with when it comes to burnout and overextending ourselves. And so if you're a person who's feeling isolated, if you're feeling burnt out or overextended this morning, we wanna encourage you and we wanna know so that we can help to serve you during this time. And so please use one of those means and, and reach out to us. Let us know how it is that you wanna serve or that you wanna know more about what ministries you can serve in or if you have an idea for a new ministry that needs to be started. As we think about ministry and service, I wanna close by saying this. It's really easy to get focused in on the details and to lose that 30,000 foot view from above. But that 30,000 foot view from above is a reminder to us that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And that Jesus has provided us an example that we can follow to serve in his name, to help show other people the love that God has for them. And so I don't want us to get too far down, caught in the weeds with, okay, what ministry and how and when, and forget that all of this is meant to be done for the glory of God. And so as we talk about ministry, as we think about ministry and service, as you go from this place today, please remember the glory of God and how you can participate in that. Here in just a second, we're gonna sing a song together. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And as we sing that, I want you to remember that as we bow before our Lord, that this is the same God that we met in Jesus who last week Rick reminded us, he himself knelt down wrapped a towel around his waist and washed his disciples' feet. God in flesh was willing to take a knee before us to wash our feet. And so I pray that each and every one of us would be willing to take a knee so that we can serve someone else in his name. Let's sing together this morning. Let's stand. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue confess. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow at his name. There is no other name. No name by which we're saved. Tongue confess at the name of Jesus. 
Yes, every knee shall bow, every knee shall bow at his name. There is no other name, no name by which we're saved. No, there is no other name but Jesus. And at the Every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Every tongue confess at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow at his name. And every knee shall bow at his name. And every knee shall bow. standing, if you will, for our closing. Let's pray, church. Lord, may your name be glorified. Lord, may our lives uh, bring praise to you. And Father, thank you for the message this morning. May our fire, Father, be lit in our hearts and in our souls that we will be like our Savior Jesus, that we will kneel and serve. Father, all this for your glory and not for ours. I pray for this church body here, Father. I pray for this family here, that we unify, Father, in service to you. Lord, all things from our hearts and our souls, we want you to be praised this day. Through Jesus we pray, amen.